Hey, what's up, guys? It is Dan from Fight Wave, and today I'm joined by somebody I'm very excited to speak to again. If you know anything about me, you know I love Australian MMA, and today's guest, in my opinion, is coming off one of the most phenomenal starts to the year that we have seen in Australian MMA right now. Coming off a phenomenal finish of Abdullah Biata in a fight that really captivated the Australian MMA scene in its entirety and all of its glory. He's one of the most exciting young talents at only 24 He's continuing to add to a resume that includes Abdullah Biata, Naim Steven, Khan Husmik, and a lot of many other great fighters on his list. He's joining us today from Ballarat. I'm joined by the amazing, the human, the human highlight reel, and his last fight was no shortage of that. Harry Webb, how are we doing today, Harry? Thanks for the introduction again, Dan. Um, I'm good, brother. How are you? Absolutely phenomenal, Harry. You know, first and foremost, my God, Harry, I don't think I've seen anybody, man, with quite the adage and living up to the name like yourself Harry I mean do you you don't you don't plan to go in there and knock people out but like you go in there and you do remark you do remarkable things Harry first and foremost how are you feeling right now coming off what is a phenomenal victory over Abdullah and how's everything been now that the dust has settled a little bit yeah good bro I'm still riding that high a little bit it's um it's been two weeks now removed so um back to work but um yeah I'm still obviously enjoying the um the fruits of my labor that um yeah everything paid off and um it was a big risk but yeah it was a good one absolutely and more importantly you know it feels like right now the momentum in the australian mma scene has is, is never been better you know right now hex is coming off one of the most remarkable events i think we've seen in australian mma in its entirety since its inception talk to me a little bit about the fight with abdullah you know going in there the experience because it was a little bit of a and not necessarily unconventional but definitely you you mentioned to me off air you know you weren't expecting this fight specifically to get made as your next bout talk to me a little bit about maybe the lead up to this fight how it kind of got made and just the overall fight itself yeah so after my last fight um i was um hoping to get a title shot on this next show and um so we were speaking to the matchmakers about the potential of what was next and um they hadn't really thrown any names at us we were sort of waiting and then um yeah out of nowhere they um they offered abdallah because he apparently he had been having a hard time getting a fight at featherweight as well understandably so he wanted to come up and um, fight for the lightweight belt. And um, yeah, so no hesitation on our end, um, even though on paper, like it was a big um, step up in competition, like nine and one um, after only being three and oh myself. So um, yeah, but I was ready to, to take that next step. And, um, you know, it, for me, it just um, skipped a few fights. Like I could have to get to this point now, if I hadn't have taken that opportunity, you know, it could have taken me, two or three more fights to get to a title fight. So um, you're not going to turn down an opportunity like that. And um, yeah, it paid off. So um, going in, like it was a massive fight. I seen, I didn't see too many people actually like doubting me. Like it was maybe a couple saying um, it's a big step up for Webb, but um, I think a lot of people now are aware of my skill set and that, um, you know, I'm a legit prospect and yeah, I just proved that as well. So. No, yeah, definitely. And I want to kind of draw comparisons momentarily because I feel like only in the Australian MMA scene do you see young fighters who really, you know, not necessarily with the track record of experience. I mean, you have the extensive amateur career, but coming into the pros, I don't think we've seen any other regional scene quite like the Australian regional scene where you have young guys coming in very fresh in their pro, you know, pro careers going up and making such big statements. You know, I want to draw a comparison to that of John O'Mikalev fighting Joseph Luciano. I feel like this is very similar in that regard, except a little bit heightened. You know, both of you guys, very recognizable names. And not only were they both very recognizable, but in the fashion that you won this fight, Harry, I feel like you kind of took it to a whole nother level. And I've spoken to Jacob Watts, you know, the promoter of Hex, uh, just about a little bit about where you stand. And he said something that really stood out to me. He said, I don't think in my years of running the Austra of working in the Australian regional scene, I've quite seen someone captivate crowds or really have that natural like superstar like aura, quite like Harry Webb. I want to ask you just a little bit about you know hearing those things, draw drawing those comparisons to two superstars within our sport. You know, talk to me a little bit about just the preparation for such a big fight, and was there any kind of not necessarily excitement but nerves that got into you uh, ahead of this fight? Yeah, I think I think for me personally, I'm I'm sort of um, one of those people that rise to the occasion. So um, I think the bigger the fight and um, the bigger the challenge, 
you know, the more like it's going to motivate me. So, um, and I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's just competition experience from being uh, a kid doing karate and that sort of thing. Like I've been competing my whole life, but um, the pressure and the nerves of competition don't really get to me that much. Like um, obviously I knew it was a massive moment and um, I think just being um, aware of my thoughts and the position that I was in, I was able to remain calm and just enjoy the moment. Like I just, I really, you know, I love being in, I love being the center of attention, um, massive crowd, heaps of there, people there supporting me. And um, yeah, I think that's when I'm, I'm going to perform at my best. No, yeah, definitely. And like, like we've prefaced, you know, you have experience not only as a youth, uh, you know, karate combatant, but also just as an amateur, you have like extensive amateur experience in mixed martial arts and you're only continuing to build your pro experience at only 24 still, you know, might I add, you know, you're really not necessarily taking, uh, you know, a hierarchical like jump up in competition because I feel like it's a little sporadic with Australia right now. But I feel like you've done a really good job of navigating the scene. Talk to me just a little bit about, you know, right now how you maybe see the future for yourself because, you know, your coach, John Campbell, put to- forward something incredibly interesting, which was after the after the Abdullah fight, we weren't really sure what was going to happen. But luckily enough, you know, over a couple over a couple cities over, you know, Diamondback had their main event fallout in the form of David Martinez versus Antonio the Spartan Caruso. You know, John Campbell put forward an amazing proposition of having Wes Capper fight J.J. Ambrose. The winner of that fight's the winner of you versus Antonio. Kind of matchmaking in his own regard, but a very, you know, remarkable set of matchmaking at that. I want to ask you just a little bit on your thoughts as a lightweight at the moment in Australia and, you know, just the aftermath, you know, some of these opponents, the potential names, just your thoughts. Yeah, so um, up until this point, it's, it's pretty much been, um, I'm, I'm just taking the fights that were offered to us. Um, but now I'm in a position where I feel like I can call the shots a little bit more. Um, and if you look at my record, you know, I'm obviously not looking to take easy fights. So I'm taking, I'm looking to take fights that are going to elevate me. And yeah, like you said, um, Tony Caruso's fight fell through. So I obviously just assumed that he's going to be looking for a matchup. Um, him, he's a fight, he's a tough fight, um, first, firstly, and he's, um, he's a name that's going to push me up the ranks even more. So like, um, you know, he's had international experience. He's been former world champion. Um, so, yeah, that's a challenge that I really like to take on. And um, that's the fight we're aiming for at this stage. Um, in terms of the rest of the lightweight division, yeah, like my coach said, John, he said um, there's only a couple of guys in the top 20 that on topology that actually have a winning record at the moment. So, or have wins recently. Um, and two of those guys, Wes Kapper and um, JJ Ambrose, both also... Um, big names in the sport, big names in Australia, both veterans um, and challenges that I would like to take on down the line if, if that's something that, that pans out. But um, I'd just like to see them guys both make lightweight. Like it has been over six years since um, JJ Ambrose made lightweight and, you know, and um, Wes Kappa the same missed weight for his last bout where I think he would have got a shot at that eternal title maybe had he have made the weight. But um yeah, I guess we'll see what happens. Tony Caruso is the next guy I want. And then after that, you know, I'm just taking it fight by fight. So, No, yeah, definitely. And I know you just on social media were pushing for the fight to happen. I think at Hex 31, if I remember correctly. Uh, any updates just in terms of maybe uh, conversations with his side and your side, you know, on a potential date for that fight or just aiming to aiming to fight next on Hex 31, correct? Yeah, so I just spoke to him briefly before and um, he just said that he's got a few things that he needs to um, work out on his end and... Uh, with Hex and hopefully that um, we can get this locked in soon. So, yeah, I'm, I'm super keen for that one. No, yeah, definitely. And just like I'm prefaced, and I really want to highlight the importance of this, you know, at only 24 years of age, the just the maturity that you have as a fighter and not, not, not only just as a fighter, but as an athlete, it speaks volumes to where you're going to go in this sport, I believe. And I want to ask you just about this maturity because I feel like a lot of young fighters – they kind of get overwhelmed, but you've mentioned and just mentioned earlier, you know, you love to step up to the occasion and just not really let the pressure get to you, which I don't think is an easy thing for a lot of fighters to not let the pressure kind of overwhelm them. Talk to me a little bit about just having this much poise this early on in your career and maybe the impact of guys like John Campbell and the team at, at Infinite MMA in Ballarat, just to have those guys around you to keep you grounded and keep you kind of steadfast on this goal to get to the UFC, to get to that next stage. Yeah, I think I think having someone like John in my in my corner has been massive for me because 
you know, he's always believed in me from the start. And, and maybe early on, like, I didn't really have as much belief in myself but just because I hadn't proved anything to myself yet. Um, that was, like, early on amateur days. But he would always say, you know, like, you're going to be the best. You're going to be the best in Australia. Um, and we're going to make it to the UFC, you know. And um, obviously, I haven't made it there yet. But, um, you know, as, and as I went along my amateur career and started proving it to myself, now I've built that belief in myself as well. So, um, you know... I believe that I'm ready for these challenges and each step I'm taking, it's, um, you know, I'm pr proving it to myself even more. So, um, you know, like two years ago, I had my fifth amateur fight and John was like, you know, um, this is a, a very ambitious, but I think you're going to be in the UFC within two years. And now it's like super possible, you know, it's, it'll be coming up in two years at the end of this year. So, um, you know, I'm not also, I'm not in a rush to get there. Like I, I still want to take the appropriate steps in getting there and get the a right amount of experience because, you know, I'm aware once you're there, you're there and there's no there's no getting out and you want to be 100% ready and to take over once you get there. So, um, but yeah, so we're looking at having a massive year this year and um, see what happens. No, yeah, definitely. And just in terms of being present in the moment, Harry, I feel like you've really done a remarkable job of not necessarily... Uh, taking yourself out of the occasion but really being present for those moments you know like winning the belt you were very present in that moment as evidenced in other interviews like watching Mitch Tenley's interviews and, and Joel Rasmussen you know uh, a bit of jokers jokesters the two of them but you know just more importantly you know I feel like just your head is in a very good space in the fight game right now and from the people around you to just yourself I feel like you've done a really good job of staying grounded where maybe some other fighters struggle to do it at your age talk to me a little bit about just those moments, I feel like they're so important. Winning that hex belt, what did it mean for you to assume it and kind of not necessarily just speak it into existence, but after all the preparation, assume that gold and really be able to cement yourself as the next up and comer at 155 in Australia? Yeah, obviously, that was a massive moment for me. It was something, you know, a goal of mine that I had for a long time um, to, to win a title at the professional level. Um, obviously, I had titles as an amateur, so. I had experienced that and they were goals that I was looking at on the way there. So, um, you know, to tick off these little milestones along the way, um, it's obviously huge. And I, and I do try and, um, you know, uh, smell the roses as, as so to speak. Um, and, but still aware that this is not the end goal and that I have to keep working really hard to keep, um, pursuing the ultimate goal, which is UFC, um, champion, but, um, that's, you know, still down the line and we are here now, but, um, yeah, I obviously love to let these moments sink in. No, yeah, definitely. And just to out of curiosity, you know, I always love to ask young fighters, you know, just when they take a step back, like you said, smell the roses a little bit. Just when you take a step back for a week or two, uh, is there any side I what, what would you say was the highlight of the time off from MMA? Because I know a lot of young fighters, they come straight back to training. I know for you, you also work on top of that. Uh, what was what would you say was just the biggest takeaway from being able to take some time off, come back to the gym, kind of re-energize and onto the next challenge? Um, for me, it's probably just realizing that I get super bored when I sit at home doing nothing. Like, I think I went, you know, like three, two or three days and I was like, you know, I need to go back to the gym because I sit on the couch when I get home from work and I'm like, eh, this is not as good as I, I thought <laughs> during flight camp. So, um, yeah, for me, it's probably just, um, yeah, feeling re-energized and just, um, a reminder why, you know, I do what I do and I love training and, and fighting. So, um, yeah, and obviously enjoying some good food too. No, yeah, definitely. After a after long and hard trading camp, being able to sit down and enjoy some of your favorite meals, obviously the biggest highlight of the camp. And But like you said, right back into the gym, you know, reminder of how much you love this sport. And J Josh Coolabout actually said something to me recently. He said, you know, you really don't, for some fighters, you really don't realize how much you love the game until you remove yourself a little bit from it. And I feel like you know, fellow countryman Alexander Volkanovsky really highlighted that with his, you know, with his post-fight, uh, you know, uh, press conference at UFC 294. I know he spoke about that a lot and how much it impacted him to want to have to continue to train. I was wondering if maybe, uh, you know, those words, you know, just kind of you felt a little bit of similarity or kind of like uh, relatability in that because I feel like it was a really big defining moment for Australian MMA to see, you know, s such a prominent figure in the space come out and really speak about that kind of stuff and really just healthy training and also just having a good di discipline and mindset in the game. Yeah, I feel like a lot of fighters would be very similar in the fact that um, they're so used to, you're so used to having something coming up 
um, something to be in routine for, you know, your dieting, your training, you're working towards something. So when you don't have that, it's a little bit, you, you can, it'd be easy to get a little bit lost. Um, and luckily for myself, you know, I've been able to stay pretty active. Like I had five fights in the last 12 months. So it's been, you know, like a, a week here, a couple of weeks and it's like pretty much straight back into it. But um, yeah, I, I can definitely see where he's, he was coming from in that. Um, and yeah, like you said, it's, um, it's definitely once you remove yourself, you know, because in camp, it gets deep into camp, you know, you're training hard, really, really hard every single day. And there's, there's obviously days where you're like, oh, man, I would love to just sit at home and do nothing today. Um, and you think that that's what you want. But then in reality, you know, you do that and you go, oh, man, this is not this is not what I want. You know, I need to be in the gym. I need to be training and, and working towards something. No, yeah. And just, you know, I hear from a lot of fighters time and time again. You know, fighting is such an amazing lifestyle that to almost remove yourself from it feels like something is wrong. And I feel like a lot of fighters relate to that, but just that healthy balance of kind of training and not training, I feel like is it's a really it's really a skill at the end of the day to kind of try to master. And Harry, I want to thank you so much for your time and just for the privilege of being able to speak with you. It's always a privilege for me to be able to speak to young fighters like yourself with such amazing people around you and such amazing goals in front of you. It really is a motivating sight to see young fighters like yourself still only 24. You know, I'm younger than you and I get motivated and chill, chill seeing what you've been able to accomplish thus far. It really is a remarkable sight. And I wanted to give you your roses there. But more importantly, on a final note, ask you, you know, you mentioned the goals of the UFC and the and the kind of the statement that Coach John Campbell put out there of from your last amateur fight, you know, two years to the day, you'll be in the UFC. And you like you said, at the very end of this year, you'll be coming up on those two years. And I know for you, it's not a rush, but what are the goals for 2024 for you just outside of the UFC, maybe? And also just, you know, fighting wise, you know, you mentioned Antonio as a op possible opponent for Hex 31. Uh, any goals personally, fighting wise, and just any message to the the human highlight reel supporters at home? Um, yeah, so for me this year, I just I would, I'm aiming for another four fights, um, whether it's uh, you know UFC later in the year or if it has to be in regional. Um, four fights is the goal. Uh, stay active, keep winning, keep adding highlights to the reel, and um, I just want to yeah, thanks all, thank you to all my sponsors and my team. And thank you to everyone who supports me. And thank you, Dan, for um, giving me the platform to um, speak. And it's always a privilege speaking to you, brother. Thank you so much, man. It really means a lot to hear those words. And more importantly, Harry, I cannot wait to watch you fight whenever that may be. Hex 31 or whenever. You know I'll be tuning in for a human highlight role performance for the ages. To the fans at home watching, do be sure to check out Harry Webb on social media. His next fight will likely be announced in the coming weeks or so. Be on the lookout for that on his social media. One of the most promising young talents Australia has right now. Just get behind your local fighters. Support him. I cannot stress that enough. It's been me, Dan, from Fight Wave. Have a great day, guys.